controversy in terms of it exists, it doesn't exist, uh, some women have it, some women don't have it, and I think it leaves a lot of room for confusion and frustration. I agree. Uh, so to this day, there's issues, and it's the issues with the research part is that the researchers themselves are not asking the right questions. Therefore, yeah. the results they're getting are not what were what would be helpful, let's say, to people who are being sexual. Well, also too, there is kind of a yes and or yes no no and answer about this in terms of what's normally being asked is is there a specific anatomical structure that is this spot mm -hmm. that can be found and located mm -hmm. and and then be kind of almost extracted and identified so mm -hmm. then we can say this is what this is and then that's the place that everyone should be looking to touch okay so is there a specific spot that like a button a magic button that you find every single time you stick your finger in the vagina well this is the thing that's interesting on it because <laughs> it's also there's sort of a, like a it's like a changing sea of sensation that's happening there the, the ocean never stays the same mm -hmm. so when you're pushing on said spot and i haven't even said if there is this spot yet then is it going to always feel the same mm -hmm. is another is another thing because and what does it even feel like but first let's answer the mystical question <laughs> well i mean, i think that it's it's become quite obvious that there is not a anatomical structure like this is my nail here mm -hmm. therefore i can take it out this nail is what needs to get stimulated however what you can say though is that if you press here at the base of my finger it's going to create a lot of blood flow and create different sensation throughout the rest of the finger and i can most accurately do that by pushing right here on mm -hmm. this place yeah. so is it an anatomical structure no it is not however is it a pressure point or let's say a pleasure point by which many different anatomical structures get stimulated engorged filled with blood and then start to deliver tremendous amounts of sensation and pleasure absolutely fantastic so that means and here was my pet peeve mm. uh, when i was writing my dissertation a uh, piece of research came out saying not all women have g-spots and i found it really irritating it would be the equivalent of saying not all men have prostate glands mm. so anatomically the structure of the tissue uh, is the urethral sponge mm. the urethral sponge in the male ends up being the prostate gland and in the female it's like our female prostate it lengthens and creates this like uh, spongy tube all around the urethra mm. but anatomically inside both the prostate and the urethral sponge are tons of little ducts that create uh, kind of a periurethral fluids that are in the female body a similar to prostate fluid, but with less male uh, hormones. I've been always very curious as well if the urethral sponge, which then goes around the urethra, which is the P tube for those mm -hmm. of you who are wondering, um, in the in the female body, if this then with male genitalia is equivalent to as well the corpus spongiosum, which is that area of tissue that then also goes around the, the underside of the penis and around the urethral tube as well. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's a different tissue from what I understand no. uh, in terms of fetal development um, because of the line, like your mouth right now has how many saliva glands. Yeah. And if, if you see something tasty, whether it's food or a person, <laughs> your mouth will fill with saliva. So the uh, that spongy tissue also really responds and there's way more periurethral ducts than there are saliva glands. Mm. So the amount of wetness that can be generated by those ducts is inc incredible. Well, I find at least from a stimulation standpoint yeah. as well, is that as you, let's say, and it's easy to visualize with the penis all start there, if you were to st start from the prostate and then send like kind of a pulse and stimulation or even slide your finger up the underside of the base of the penis towards the head while also maybe even keeping pressure on the prostate. It's kind of like if you're having one of those long balloons and then you were to slide your hand along it, there's gonna be a lot of uh, blood pressure, sensation, blood flow that gets pushed the toward head. It's the head yeah. of the penis. And you'll see a change in color, you'll see a change in sensation. You know, like There's a lot of things that start to happen when you do that. And the equivalent, then, if you were to slide your finger 
from the depth of the vagina, and we will talk about the CUV complex at some point, but slide from the depth of the vagina along that upper wall towards the belly and where the urethral sponge is mm -hmm. on the other side of the vaginal lining, and then slide all the way towards where you make contact into the pubic bone. When you create pressure by either sliding the finger and then especially when then it goes into that pubic bone, it sends a lot of blood flow and also sensation into the clitoral legs, mm -hmm. into the the glands, the which is like the head of the clitoris, which would be the equivalent of like the male penis. The legs of the clitoris would be the equivalent of the two big bodies on the top of the penis, which is the corpus cavernosum. And so like this whole area just gets charged with added blood flow, which means there's more oxygen, which means then there's more firing going to the nerves to send back, oh, we're getting a lot of pleasure here. Yes. And so structurally stimulating these thing, these parts of the bodies from the inside out and naturally bringing blood flow this way from inside out as opposed to pushing in, which is kind of how a lot of times we do either by like, you know, imagine like your typical hand job or even just stimulating the clitoris from the outside not encouraging that blood flow to come out and then get a lot of these areas super engorged, which then is when the body is going to have a chance to start to feel pleasure. And that's even if there's no tension there, which has to then be relieved because there's a whole bunch of uh, things that can kind of come we'll, up. When we'll definitely stimulated. teach on that in the yeah. explicit part of today's <laughs> episode. So we'll teach you how to bring that mm. blood flow and what to do exactly to get that G spot to activate. And this is a big one that we're going to bust here, and it's not the kind of newest and the, the quote unquote new information that's out there on G spot stimulation is this come hither, which everyone mm -hmm. knows. But this is like just a fraction of, yeah. of what can really be done to help. This because area part of the mind. stimulation isn't just the giver; it's also the yes, receiver. Yes, there we go. But we'll get into that <laughs> in the explicit part. So, but first of all, okay. So there's not an actual structure. Mm but it is part of the urethral sponge. Yes. And... Well, I think we could even go more than that. So like I would say the spot itself, when you press through the vaginal wall, you are stimulating the urethral sponge. As you get closer towards that pubic bone area where it makes contact, you will be stimulating the skein's glands. You're going to be stimulating actually kind of where a lot of all these structures come together isn't something that's typically known, but it's a cobalt's venous plexus, which is where the glands and the clitoral legs join together. And also then you have the urethral sponge. And so all of this area literally like gets- hyper -innervated. hyper -innervated, um, Also, uh, what would you call that? Uh, with lots of uh, veins yeah. or capillaries. Yeah. It's just like very, lots of blood infusion <laughs> that's going on there, hyperoxygenated. And then when you then place pressure in that spot, which would be, let's say, maybe anywhere from, uh, I guess we can let's say inches, you would say maybe about an inch to three inches in along that upper wall, you'll feel if you were to slide kind of where it just naturally dips a little bit. And then if you were to curl your finger back, which you typically see now is like this kind of come here their motion, but really like make contact to the to the bone, which is the backside of the pubic bone, you'll feel like there's a harder structure there. And when this does, it creates that pinch that then sends that sensation out. But of course, if there's tension there, then it's not going to be experienced as a good yeah, sensation. Yeah, if there's no arousal, you won't feel it. So arousal is, um, in order for the G-spot to quote unquote exist, arousal is needed. So a lot of times if a woman's uh, vulva isn't engorged uh, or she's paranoid or something's going on with her emotionally where it's not, she's got tension, in either her emotions or her mind or her body, there won't be significant blood flow. And that area, she'll be like, I don't feel anything, there's nothing there. But there yeah. also can be numbness there. Yeah, there can be numbness, but, or, or even like, I think a lot of times the sensation a person feels is- They need to pee. Like they need to pee, maybe like kind of an increase in pressure. Mm -hmm. It's similar to if you, if a penis is, is not erect and you then squeeze it, 
you can feel that there's some pressure change there. But if the penis is erect and then you were to squeeze at the base of it, it's you're gonna more. there's a lot you're gonna oh yes. that that is a quote unquote pressure point. <laughs> so so that's important. It's um, the G spot is part of erectile tissue. Mm -hmm. Are you looking for one place that you can go to source all of your answers to the questions that you may have around relationships, intimacy, and passion? Then look no further. Join our free membership where we have 20-minute podcasts just rich with information, free mini courses, and so much more. Join us at embodylove.love.